Hey guys, it's Angela from Prairie Dog Care. Uh, this video is on cage requirements for a black-tailed prairie dog. Ah, yay! I'm sorry, I just got off work. But anyway, uh, cage requirements for a black-tailed prairie dog. This is important because people think that they can go get any cage and it's proper and it's right and all this kind of stuff. No. Um, prairie dogs are master escape artists. So if you get a flimsy plastic cage or if you get a guinea pig cage or, you know, something like that, they're going to get out. And they're also going to hurt themselves. Behind me, I have the All Living Things multi-level home. There's two of them put together. The top part goes all the way across. There's no slat dividing it. And at the bottom, the walls are still up. So they have to go up, over, and down. Um, so there's two of them put together. The All Living Things multi-level home is exactly like the Critter Nation. Exactly. They're actually made by the same people. It's just one's made for PetSmart, one's made for, you know, Petco, and the other one's made for quality cages. Um, you can usually get them anywhere between 200 and, and sometimes lower if you look on Facebook Marketplace. And Quality Cages has their brand, which is also a good one, too. Um, those are the really the only three that are, uh, a, you know, Prairie Dog approved. Because if you look behind me, these bars, they're very small. And they're horizontal small, okay? Um, I compare these, uh, the way the doors and the walls are set up, to college rule paper. If your cage looks like the walls, the doors, everything look like college rule paper... <clears throat> then it is a good, you know, choice. Size. Um, I ha I'm going to have four total. I've got two now. I'm getting two more this spring. Um, it's two prairie dogs per Critter Nation or All Living Things cage. They need a big cage like this, okay? Those little bitty ones for hamsters, gerbils, guinea pigs, rabbits, and stuff are, aren't good for them. It's too small of a space. And the... Uh, uh, it's basically if the horizontal bars are more than a half inch in width, stay away from it. Um, the Ferret Nation cage, stay away from that. Do not put your prairie dog in that because they will cage pluck. And that means they take their teeth and try to pull at the wires. They will hook them under the bar and pull it. They will also stick their nose through the bar and they will get nose rash. And when they start using their teeth on hard surfaces, like trying to pull the bars off, it causes autotomas after, you know, uh, teeth trauma like that. And then that is excruciating for a prairie dog to go through. So please make sure that you get the right cage. If the bars are too far apart, they need to be going horizontal like college rule paper. Okay. And that I cannot stress that enough. If they are more than a half an inch horizontally like this, each row is this, please do not buy that one. Um, if you want an example, go look at the Ferret Nation cage or the um, Katie guinea pig small animal cage and see how wide those bars are. That's what I'm talking about. They need very tiny bars to protect their teeth and to protect their little tender noses. It also needs to, it doesn't have to be a multi-level. I've seen people, you know, build one that's, you know, long ways and its height is pretty good. Um, as long as its bar width is, you know, within recommendation, that's fine. Um... I would go ahead and invest in a All Living Things multi-level home or a Critter Nation cage or a quality cage home because it is by far the best. They have plenty of room. I would also get them a chin spin. It is a 15 inch. Do not get them wheels, running wheels, with bars in through the middle of it because they can get hurt by if another prairie dog jumps in it and it flips them over that bar, it can hurt their spine. Um, it can cause them to get, you know, hurt when they're running by themselves and they slip. Um, so stay away from the ones that have the bars running through the center. The only one that is approved for prairie dogs is the chin spin, um, which they call a chin spin because it's a chinchilla exercise wheel, 15 inches. Uh, quality Cages um, has those. Amazon and eBay. 
So please check into that. But um, if you're gonna get a multi-level home, make sure the levels are you know low enough to where if they fall or walk off one of these lower levels, like the trays right here that you see behind me, uh, make sure that you know it's not a distance that they can fall and hurt themselves because head injury and teeth injuries are what causes autonomous and that you know based on scientific research um, so and do not open the top tier doors to let them out um, a fall from here to here can severely injure a prairie dog always have a ramp um, it's, you know so be mindful of that but I just wanted to stress that getting the proper cage is prudent to caring for these animals. Especially if you're gonna be working during the day like me, they need plenty of room to run around. Um, one is enough, one of this, you know, one cage like this one is enough for two prairie dogs. So you don't have to put two together. I just plan on expanding my family to four. That's why I have two of them put together. I also have them a whole room to play in. They also need to have free roam time out of their cage. And make sure you prairie dog proof. Hide wires, uh, you know, nightstands, TV stands, uh, vents, air conditioner vents, and stuff like that. Um, even doors. If you have wooden doors, wooden gates, you know, stuff like that, they're going to chew through it. So install a kick plate or put up a baby gate and cover it with cardboard like, you know, that's what I've done. Also go around your walls using the same thing. Um, you can get post office boxes sent to you for free. Um, behind it, I have some of those garage sale signs like that. And I use Gorilla duct tape to tape them together to make a perimeter. They have blank ones at Home Depot and Lowe's. And I just use Gorilla Tape. Gorilla Tape is the best because they it's very, very hard for them to be able to pull it off. Um, so I've got the whole perimeter, even the cage. People ask why I have my cage um, like that sealed up at the bottom and don't use the shelves. Because prairie dogs can slide up underneath things. They can flatten out. And if you get... A prairie dog and they're spooked and you let them out in free roam time and they get scared you will hurt yourself or them trying to pull them out from underneath that cage so it's best just to block it off um, so that's what I did but other than that as long as you have a good size cage with the recommended bar width and the you know proper requirements that's all you need and make sure that your prairie dog um, has a room that is prairie dog proof or a house that's prairie dog proof. Um, that means, you know, underneath dishwashers, stoves, cabinets, tables, air vents, behind entertainment centers where there's wires, underneath couches. Um, they can tear just like a rat. They can eat through anything. They, they will literally, and once they find a spot where they're starting to pluck and pull and, and burrow, whether it be your couch, your recliner, the floor, the wall, whatever, they will not stop until they get it. So, either put your couch on the floor and take the legs off to where they can't climb underneath it, or get you some of those uh, plastic mats that they used in the 80s, you know, like, bath mats are clear you know grandma's houses have them everywhere and put them around your uh, sofa on the corners and stuff to keep them from pulling you know that stuff out and getting in your couch because you will never get them out I mean you will but it, they might get hurt before you do um, so be mindful of that they are burrowers they like to dig and burrow and build they are huge builders like beavers so anything that they can get their teeth on, they're going to chew it up. So make sure that you're aware of that. And they are master escape artists. So make sure that your roofs to the cages are latched very good. Even use zip ties so that you can make sure that they're all secure. To where they can't climb up and headbutt them and get them loose and climb out. And always check your cage for vulnerabilities because if they pop a bar loose... They will continue to do it until they can get out. So, that's why I say stick with the cages that are meant for them, like the one behind me in the Critter Nation and the quality cages, because it's very hard for them to, you know, 
it has to be poorly made or something or be a flaw in these cages before they could ever figure out how to get out of it so but anyway i try to keep my videos under 10 minutes so um i hope this has helped you kind of figure out what you need as far as a cage and space and cage requirements goes if you want to request a video, please do so. And always remember, I say this in every video, go on Facebook, find you a Prairie Dog group. Um, Prairie Dog Parents is a great one. They have plenty of files and lots of members to share stories, ask questions, and, you know, read stories and get some really good information on cages, nutrition, potty training, everything. And it's Prairie Dog Parents on Facebook. Make sure it's the actual group and not the preschool. So make sure you hit like and share the video. Please subscribe. And if you want to hear some content or you want to request a video, please do so in the comments. And I will be glad to do that for you. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I hope you've enjoyed Prairie Dog Care. We'll see you later.